Top 25 SAP CPI Interview Questions and Answers In the ever-evolving landscape of integration technology, preparation for SAP CPI interviews is crucial. This video presents a curated list of the top 25 interview questions that candidates may encounter in their journey toward securing a position in this field. Each question is accompanied by a comprehensive answer, designed to enhance your understanding and boost your confidence. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced professional, these insights will equip you with the knowledge needed to excel in your interview. 1. What is SAP CPI, and how does it differ from other integration tools? SAP Cloud Platform Integration CPI, is a cloud-based integration service that enables the seamless exchange of data between various applications, both on-premise and in the cloud. Unlike traditional integration tools, which may require extensive coding, SAP CPI offers a user-friendly interface with pre-built connectors and templates, allowing for faster deployment and easier management of integration scenarios. Its ability to support various communication protocols and data formats, along with built-in monitoring and error handling capabilities, distinguishes it from other tools, making it particularly suitable for SAP environments. 2. Explain the architecture of SAP CPI. SAP CPI, Cloud Platform Integration, architecture consists of multiple layers that enhance integration capabilities. At the core is the integration runtime, which executes integration flows, iFlows. This layer interacts with various adapters, such as SOAP, REST, and OData, allowing seamless communication with diverse systems. The design environment enables users to model and configure iFlows using graphical tools. Additionally, the monitoring and operations layer provides insights into integration processes, enabling error handling and performance tracking. Security is ensured through authentication and authorization mechanisms, safeguarding data in transit. 3. What are the key components of SAP CPI? SAP CPI consists of several key components that facilitate integration. Integration flow, iFlow, which defines the integration process. Adapters that connect different systems, enabling data exchange. Message mapping for transforming data formats and groovy scripts for custom logic implementation. Additionally, Content Modifier allows modification of message attributes, while prepackaged content offers ready-to-use integrations. Monitoring tools provide insights into integration processes and error handling, ensuring smooth operations across integrated systems. 4. What is an iFlow, and how is it used in SAP CPI? An iFlow, short for Integration Flow, is a graphical representation of data flows in SAP CPI. It defines the sequence of processing steps, including the source and target systems, transformation, and routing of messages. iFlows are essential for connecting different applications and services, facilitating data exchange between them. Users can design iFlows using pre-built templates or create custom ones based on specific business requirements. Each iFlow can incorporate various components such as adapters, message transformations, and error handling mechanisms, providing a flexible approach to integration scenarios. 5. Explain the difference between synchronous and asynchronous communication in CPI. Synchronous communication in SAP CPI occurs when the sender and receiver engage in real-time exchanges. The sender waits for a response before proceeding, which ensures immediate feedback but can lead to delays if the receiving system is slow. In contrast, asynchronous communication allows the sender to dispatch a message without waiting for an immediate response, enabling the sender to continue processing other tasks. This method is beneficial for scenarios where response time is not critical, promoting efficiency and scalability in integration workflows. Each approach has its uses depending on the integration requirements. 6. How do you handle errors in SAP CPI? Handling errors in SAP CPI involves several steps. First, you can configure error handling in your integration flow, iFlow, to capture errors using the error end event. This allows you to redirect failed messages to a designated endpoint for further processing. Implementing exception handling can also utilize Groovy scripts to perform custom logic based on the error type. Additionally, you can monitor errors through the SAP CPI operations view, which provides insight into processing logs, allowing you to identify and troubleshoot issues effectively. Proper logging and alerting mechanisms further enhance error management. 7. What are the different types of adapters available in SAP CPI? SAP CPI offers several types of adapters that facilitate integration with various systems. These include HTTP adapter, used for REST full and SOAP-based web services. SFTP adapter, enables secure file transfer over SSH. OData adapter, facilitates integration using OData services, allowing for seamless data exchange. JDBC adapter, connects to databases using JDBC for data retrieval and manipulation. Mail adapter, sends and receives emails as part of integration processes. Each adapter serves specific integration scenarios, enhancing connectivity between disparate systems. 8. How do you configure the SFTP adapter in CPI? 
To configure the SFTP adapter in SAP CPI, start by creating a new integration flow, iFlow, in the SAP Cloud Integration Tool. Drag and drop the SFTP sender or receiver adapter into your iFlow. Configure the adapter by entering the SFTP server details, such as host, port, username, and password. Ensure the authentication method is set appropriately, either password-based or using a private key. Additionally, specify the remote directory and file settings. Finally, test your adapter configuration to ensure connectivity and proper file transmission. Adjust logging levels as necessary for monitoring. 9. Explain how OData adapter works in SAP CPI. The OData adapter in SAP CPI allows integration with OData services, enabling seamless data exchange between different systems. It facilitates both inbound and outbound communication, supporting various HTTP methods like GET, POST, PUT, and DELETE. When configuring the OData adapter, you specify the service URL, authentication type, and any necessary query parameters. The adapter transforms requests and responses into a format suitable for processing within the integration flow. This enables efficient access to data from SAP and non-SAP systems, promoting interoperability in diverse environments. 10. How do you use the SOAP adapter in CPI? The SOAP adapter in SAP CPI enables you to connect with web services that follow the Simple Object Access Protocol, SOAP, standard. To use the SOAP adapter, first create an integration flow, iFlow, in CPI. Then, configure the SOAP adapter as the sender or receiver, depending on your integration scenario. You will need to specify the WSDL, Web Services Description Language, URL to define the service structure. Additionally, set up the necessary security credentials, such as username and password, if required. After configuring the adapter, you can map the incoming and outgoing messages using message mapping tools within CPI to ensure the data is transformed appropriately for both systems. 11. What is the role of Groovy Scripts in SAP CPI? Groovy scripts in SAP CPI serve as a powerful tool for enhancing integration flows by allowing developers to implement custom logic. They can manipulate message content, perform complex data transformations, and facilitate conditional processing. By utilizing Groovy, users can access various integration data elements, such as payloads and headers, to execute precise operations tailored to specific scenarios. This scripting capability enhances flexibility and efficiency enabling developers to address unique business requirements that standard components may not fulfill effectively. 12. How do you implement message transformation in CPI? In SAP CPI, message transformation can be implemented using various components like message mapping, content modifiers, and Groovy scripts. First, create an integration flow, iFlow, and utilize the message mapping feature to define source and target message structures. You can employ graphical mapping tools to map fields from the source message to the target message. Content modifiers can be used to manipulate message headers or properties during the transformation process. Additionally, Groovy scripts allow for complex transformations where standard mapping capabilities may not suffice, enabling customized logic to achieve specific transformation requirements. 13. What is the difference between content modifier and message transformers? In SAP CPI, a content modifier is used for altering message attributes and adding or modifying message headers, payloads, and properties at various points in an integration flow. It allows users to manipulate data without changing its structure. On the other hand, message transformers are used for transforming the content of the message from one format to another, such as from XML to JSON or vice versa. They facilitate more complex data transformations, allowing for the restructuring of the message content itself. The key difference lies in their purpose. Content modifiers focus on modification of message attributes, while message transformers focus on content transformation. 14. How do you handle large payloads in SAP CPI? Handling large payloads in SAP CPI requires several strategies to optimize performance and ensure successful processing. One effective approach is to use the chunking technique, which breaks down large messages into smaller, manageable parts. This can prevent memory issues and improve processing time. Additionally, you can configure message size limits in the integration flow to control the maximum allowable size. Using streaming capabilities for data transfer can also be beneficial, allowing for efficient handling of large volumes without overwhelming the system resources. Always monitor performance and adjust as necessary for optimal results. 15. Explain how you would secure data in SAP CPI. To secure data in SAP CPI, utilize encryption and secure protocols, including HTTPS for data transmission. Implement role-based access control, RBAC, to restrict user permissions based on their roles. Use secure connectivity options like virtual private network, VPN, or private network connections for enhanced security. Leverage key stores for managing cryptographic keys and certificates, ensuring secure storage of sensitive information. 
regularly monitor and audit integration flows to detect any unauthorized access or data breaches, thereby maintaining data integrity and confidentiality. 16. What are CPI key stores, and how are they used? CPI key stores are repositories for storing cryptographic keys and certificates used in secure communications within SAP Cloud Platform integration. They facilitate secure data transmission by enabling SSL, TLS connections and managing digital signatures. Key stores can contain public and private keys, as well as trusted root certificates. Users can create, manage, and reference these key stores when configuring security settings for various integrations, ensuring that sensitive information remains protected during data exchange processes. Proper configuration of key stores is essential for maintaining data integrity and confidentiality in integrations. 17. How do you monitor and troubleshoot integrations in SAP CPI? Monitoring and troubleshooting integrations in SAP CPI can be achieved through various tools provided within the platform. The monitoring dashboard allows users to track message flows, check the status of integrations, and review logs for errors. Users can access message processing logs to identify issues in specific flows. Alerts can be configured to notify administrators of failures or performance bottlenecks. The integration flow design view enables testing and debugging of individual components, helping to isolate and resolve problems efficiently. Regularly reviewing these tools ensures smooth operation and prompt resolution of any issues. 18. What is the use of the Process Direct Adapter? The Process Direct Adapter in SAP CPI is utilized for integrating different processes within the same tenant. It allows seamless communication between various I flows by enabling message routing without the need for external endpoints. This adapter is beneficial for scenarios where data needs to be passed internally between different flows, ensuring efficient orchestration of processes. It simplifies the process design and enhances performance by reducing the overhead of external calls, making it an essential component for intra-tenant integrations. 19. How do you implement retry mechanisms in CPI? Implementing retry mechanisms in SAP CPI involves configuring the integration flow to handle transient errors effectively. This allows you to specify the number of retry attempts and the delay between each attempt. For example, you may configure a retry interval of a few seconds or minutes, depending on the expected recovery time of the external system. Additionally, utilizing the exception handling process can help manage errors more gracefully, allowing you to log failures or send notifications if retries are exhausted. 20. Explain how to use the HTTP adapter in SAP CPI. The HTTP adapter in SAP CPI facilitates communication with external systems via REST or SOAP protocols. To use it, first, create an iFlow in the integration flow designer. Drag and drop the HTTP adapter from the palette. Configure the adapter by specifying the request, URL, HTTP method, get, post, put, delete, and any required headers. You can also define query parameters and authentication details. Map incoming and outgoing messages using message mappings. Finally, deploy the iFlow and monitor it to ensure successful communication with external systems. 21. What are the best practices for designing iFlows? When designing iFlows in SAP CPI, follow these best practices. Modularity. Break down complex iFlows into smaller, reusable sub iFlows for better maintainability. Naming conventions. Use clear and consistent naming conventions for iFlows, message mappings, and other artifacts to enhance readability. Error handling. Implement robust error handling mechanisms to capture and manage errors effectively, ensuring smooth integration processes. Performance optimization. Optimize performance by minimizing data transformations and using groovy scripts judiciously. Documentation. Maintain comprehensive documentation for each iFlow, detailing its purpose, configurations, and any dependencies. This aids future updates and troubleshooting efforts. 22. How do you deploy and transport changes in SAP CPI? To deploy and transport changes in SAP CPI, you can use the CPI design environment to package your integration flows, iFlows, and artifacts. First, navigate to the design area, select the required iFlow or artifact, then click on the export option to create a deployment package. You can transport these packages to different SAP CPI tenants using the transport management feature. Once the package is imported into the target tenant, you will need to activate the iFlows and ensure that the necessary configurations, such as credentials and endpoints, are correctly set up before execution. This method ensures smooth transitions between development, testing, and production environments. 23. What is the difference between CPI Cloud Foundry and Neo environments? The primary difference between CPI Cloud Foundry and Neo environments lies in their architecture and deployment models. Cloud Foundry is based on a microservices architecture, providing more flexibility, scalability, and support for modern development practices such as DevOps. It allows for the use of various programming languages and tools. In contrast, Neo is a more traditional platform that offers a more rigid structure. 
Additionally, Cloud Foundry supports multi-cloud deployments, while Neo is primarily tied to SAP S infrastructure. This difference affects how integrations are designed, developed, and managed within each environment. 24. How do you integrate SAP CPI with SAP S 4 HANA? Integrating SAP CPI with SAP S 4 HANA involves several key steps. First, establish a secure connection between CPI and S4HANA using the appropriate adapters, such as the OData or SOAP adapter. Next, configure the required APIs in S4HANA and create integration flows, iFlows, in CPI to define data mappings and transformations. Ensure proper authentication methods are implemented, utilizing OAuth or basic authentication as needed. Finally, test the integration thoroughly to validate data exchange, monitor the integration processes through CPI, S monitoring tools, and address any issues that arise during communication. 25. What are the limitations of SAP CPI? SAP CPI has several limitations that users should be aware of. One notable limitation is the maximum message size, which can affect the processing of large payloads. Additionally, SAP CPI can have performance constraints depending on the complexity of the integration flow and the volume of data being processed. Users may also encounter limitations in terms of supported adapters and protocols, as not all integration scenarios are covered. Lastly, there can be restrictions related to error handling and monitoring capabilities, which may require additional tools for comprehensive management. In this video, we've explored the top 25 SAP CPI interview questions and answers, providing you with valuable insights to help you excel in your next interview. By familiarizing yourself with these questions, you'll enhance your understanding of SAP CPI and boost your confidence. Remember, preparation is key to success in any interview. If you found this content helpful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more informative videos. Your support motivates us to create even more valuable resources for you. Thank you for watching.